Good afternoon and welcome to Iceline Westchester University Hockey taking on Liberty University. Last night the Flames scored seven goals and Westchester hopes to avenge that loss. Here at Iceline alongside Brian Augsburger, I'm Michael Augsburger. It's great to have you with us. Westchester comes in 6-11 and 11, and the Flames had no trouble scoring on Michael Rice last night. Coach Wall sends out Brandon Colgan tonight to get his first win of the season. At the other side of the net, Matt Pinnell had a shutout last night against the Golden Rams and he's been splitting time this season with Blake Scott who earns the start tonight from their head coach Kirk Handy who's looking for his 360th career victory. For Westchester the starting lineup Mango, Optinaker, Bionis, Horacek, Colgan and Skipper on the ice for this faceoff. We're all ready for the draw and Westchester in the home yellows wins the opening faceoff. Bionis shovels it into the zone and it gets behind the goal where Liberty picks it up. It's sent out into the corner and then Hayes tries to clear the zone and finally Westchester picks it up at center on the far side. The first couple of minutes here, a better start for Westchester than last night. Hayes fires the shot from the blue line and Colgan holds on to force the faceoff. Brian Augsburg is here alongside me, and um, what have you been seeing so far here tonight? Uh, what are you looking for? Uh, well, I'm looking for a big game out of Colgan tonight. Um, you know, I've had high praise of him in the past, but unfortunately he's only he doesn't have a win this, this season. So uh, I, I do think that he'll do well tonight. It's just a matter of whether Westchester can uh, bring it as a, as a whole team. And the offense is what was uh, lacking last night. No goals scored against uh, Pinnell. Westchester rips the wrister from the far side, points, and with 19-16 left to go in the first period. We've only just begun here in Westchester. We're looking for the first goal of the game after 44 seconds. Liberty had seven goals last night. Seven different goal scorers were on the score sheet. In the faceoff on the far side circle, Mango wins the draw for Westchester. Back to Optinaker at the point, who wraps it around, and then a Opportunity in front, shoved aside there by Scott. Here's Bionis into the corner to Horacek, who races after it in the far corner, defending him. The Flames, and then here on the near side, they'll break out with it. Great passing last night from Liberty. They're in the same away blues as we saw last night. Thompson centers it to Hamilton. It was knocked away from him and into the corner behind the goal. Emerging with it here is Bill Swall. Swall saucers it across ice, and it was too high for Horacek to bring down, and Nelson will take care of it. Nelson is the reigning second star of the league for uh, the last week of play, which was before Thanksgiving weekend. The Flames send in on Colgan, who stops it behind his goal, and both teams make a switch. Optinaker fires it up ice. It's stopped at center by Kruikshank, and then Westchester takes control. Gibbs tries to take a shot, and he centers it, and then the rebound. It's stopped in front by Scott. The shot came in from McElroy. And we'll have a face-off inside the zone with 18-18 left on the clock in the first period. Scott's numbers so far this season, he's 6-2, a little bit of a better record than Matt Pinnell, who is 6-4 now after the win last night. Blake Scott allowing about three goals a game. And if Westchester scored three tonight, they would be happy with that. And we'll trust Colgan with keeping them under that. Here's Kyle, I'm um, sorry, Cleary, who sends it in, and then Garvin stops it at the half boards. He's looking for a pass and finds his man across the ice, across the blue line. The shot comes in, it's the Philadelphian Crane, but the shot is blocked by Colgan, and then sent back out into center. Hughes wasn't able to keep it in the zone, and he passes it across the ice for Fricks. Now Jamie Crane with it. His brother also on the team, and their family is in attendance tonight, as they were last night as they're coming from the city of Philadelphia here. Bill Swall with the puck behind his own net. Wraps it around the near side boards and a good breakout pass and taking the hit there. And then Tom Cole with the puck in the near side corner. Centers it, no one's there on the end of it. Gage down and keeps it in the zone, up high off the glass. Cole behind the net, out in front, the shot comes in. He found his man in front, Mickey McShane. But Scott was there to close the door with 17.25 left to go in the first period.
Much better start offensively for Westchester here as Swalls made some adjustments to the offensive scheme. Face off one by Mango and the shot from Horacek is a quick one and is stopped easily there by Scott. We'll reset for the face off and this is one of the quickest redraws we've seen. Although now the linesman is holding things up. Liberty wins the draw. Nelson comes up with the puck. He banks it off the boards and gets it out to center where Bionis chips it into the zone. Kruikshank goes after it in the near side corner. He wraps it around to the far side. Here's Nelson up the side. It's stripped away from him and Cleary sends it all the way up and this will be icing. Well, what we know about Liberty so far is that they're a complete team as opposed to some other teams that we've seen in the past where yeah. it's a one-man show. So uh, in, in what you've seen last night, seven goals from, from seven different players it tells you that's that uh, they're a complete team, and it's not just a one-man show. And, and geographically as well, because they recruit heavily from Canada as well as the United States, all over the country. Liberty is one of the few uh, national schools, uh, you might say, in uh, Division One club hockey because of the, the Christian nature of the school and the draw that they have all over the entirety of the country. Here's Harris, who tries to make a move in the slot, and Cleary was there to uh, knock it away from him. Hughes is taken down at center. No penalty called. Cleary now jumps on the puck. He's got it on the near side, and he tries to center, but it's chipped up into the air by Hamilton. And then Cleary finally comes down with the puck. He's able to pass it to Jean-Louis at the point. His pass inside is no good, and so Liberty breaks out with it. Here's Harris. Harris centers it for Hamilton, picked up instead by Cleary. Good pack checking there from the Rams. Cleary sends it in on goal, and it's... Shoved into the corner by Scott, off his pad. Hughes picks it up there and passes behind the goal, and now Hayes has it. He blindly chips it uh, on the backhands, and no one was there for him, and so Westchester recollects, and they'll pick it up in their own zone. Optin Aker back to Skipper, and a long pass ahead for McElroy goes through his skates, and down for icing as Hughes touches up with 15.52 to play. At this point, last night we already had two goals scored. Liberty scored in the first 25 minutes, or 25 seconds, I should say, of the game, and then again in the next two minutes and 30 seconds. So by now it was 2-0, and so Swall must be really happy with this performance so far from the Rams. Face off in their own zone, won by uh, Liberty, inside the Rams zone, I should say, and uh, the puck is chipped up in the air for a stoppage. Now you mentioned that two goals were already scored, uh, and that seems to be a problem for Westchester starting off um, not not just hot, but uh, but not allowing goals in the first couple of minutes. It seems to be um, a trend for them. You can name a couple of teams that we follow that have trouble early in games, as Reynolds fires in the shot after Liberty wins the faceoff, and it's gloved down by Colgan. And the faceoff will come near side circle after Westchester iced the puck, even though that passage of play was short. This is their first opportunity to change the line, and they'll do so. Tom Cole wins the draw in his own circle. Bill Swall takes a big hit in his own corner to get the puck out, but it's not out. It's sent to the blue line. And then the shot comes in. Good move by Westchester to get it out of the zone. McShane gives chase to it now. A lot more pep in the step of the Rams tonight. Long pass ahead over everybody with Sharts. And then Westchester gains the zone. Near side. Tom Cole with it in the corner. He's defended well by Schartz, but he gets past him, centers it in front, and it's blocked away there. Liberty now takes control behind the goal. Skating up with it, Schartz. He passes to Krilly, who sends it in, wraps it around near side. Colgan couldn't get it, and he falls behind his goal, but luckily Westchester, for him, picks it up inside their own zone and skates out with it. Westchester now at center. Korachek, I'm sorry, Jean-Louis sends it in, near side, Kruikshank banks it around, here's Jamie Crane, side steps Optenaker, and then a great move here to get around his defender, and then out in front, Nelson is able to lift the puck, good save by Colgan up high, rebound directed near side, corner, Garvin now at the point, his pass through the slot, he never saw Leo Flick come through the zone, and Flick gets it out to center, Kruikshank bats it down with his glove, and now skates around in his own zone. His pass up along the bench, hits somebody in the bench, and that will cause a face-off inside the Liberty zone with 14-13 left to go in the first period. 
first period last night, Liberty outshot Westchester 20 to 5. And if we're keeping track of things as well as we are here now, it's very close. 4 to 3 in shots. Liberty wins the draw in their own zone. The pass is up ahead a little bit too far for Marshall King, who scored last night. Behind the goal, here's Bergen. He skates around and is able to center it. It goes through the slot. Hughes picks it up at the point, sends it in. It's blocked in front, never makes it to Colgan. And Westchester skates out with it. Uh, Opton Aker sends it in. And now behind the goal, Liberty comes out as Westchester switches lines. King wraps it around. Far side to Colgan, who wraps it to the near side. And here's Hughes. Cross ice pass to Fricks. Fricks defended well by Bionis. Bionis steals the puck from him and is taken down from behind. No penalty called as Swall was looking for that one on the bench right in front of him. Here's Andy Skipper with the puck. He's got some time. He's able to find John Mango who shovels it into the zone near side corner. Back behind the goal. Now centering pass to Mango. He shoots. It goes wide to the right and he's taken down. And we'll see what happens here on the stoppage. Perhaps the net was loose. Perhaps something else, but it looks like it's just because the net's loose with 13-13 to play in the first period. Still looking for the first goal of the game between Liberty and Westchester. Face off to the right of Scott. Mango loses the draw. Liberty gets it behind the goal. Here's Hughes, who wraps it to the far side. Lifted out of the zone by Liberty and then chopped down. Here's Harris. Harris takes the shot, save made, rebound out in front, and picked up by Westchester. Good save made by Colgan. Here's Optenaker with it across the blue line. He skates into the corner. He's got Reynolds watching him. He centers it. Three flames are waiting for the puck, and it goes through. The pass here for Hamilton on the blue line of the Westchester zone goes over his stick. Thompson passes back out to Schartz. Skates to the point. Sends in the wrister. It's deflected wide to the right harmlessly and here's Bill Swall behind the goal gives to Optin Aker he's got Crane now Crane skates to the half boards Schartz calls for the one timer it's in his skates he passes back to Crane shot saved by Scott by Colgan I should say and that will stop play as he covers up 12 22 left to go and we're still looking for the first goal well, we're seeing a lot of good traffic out in front in front of Colgan so far uh, Liberty's trying to deflect pucks into the net, whereas we see a lot of teams where they, they, they just don't do that. A lot of teams are, we've seen here in uh, Division I club hockey looking for that uh, goal from the original shot rather than deflections. And Liberty now with the puck on the far side. They've got it into the Westchester zone behind the goal. Hayes. And then a centering pass. Great pass. Crane tries to lift it over Colgan. It goes over the net. And then behind the goal, Liberty skating out with it. Hayes skates through the slot, skates through three Golden Rams. Fires. It goes wide to the right. Now Sharts with it. He skates behind the goal into the near side corner. Bill Swall with it. And now Jean-Louis. He skates up ice across the blue line. And it falls in. On Scott, who's able to smother the puck with 11.31 on the scoreboard in the first period. It's been back and forth in the first nine minutes of the game so far this evening. Whereas last night, Liberty was camped out for the most part in the Westchester zone. Tom Cole taking the draw for the Westchester. Liberty wins it. Here's Kruikshank in the corner. The pass up ahead. Jamie Crane. He centers through the neutral zone. Liberty's able to gain the zone. Garvin has it. Chips into the near side half boards. Now Jamie Crane tries to face the goal. It's sent into the corner instead. Garvin with a good pass. He finds Ryan, he shoots, he scores! Ryan found the pass from the corner and he ripped his wrister from the slot and he found the top left corner to make it one nothing. Well, I was just gonna say, once Liberty gets into their to the zone, into Westchester's zone. They, they know exactly how to pass. They know exactly where each other are going, whereas Westchester, we've seen it a couple times now, there's just a lack of communication where they're going to be. We saw Colgan uh, fired around the boards when his teammate was right there, so it's just a lack of communication from Westchester, and it showed on that, on that play right there. Quinn Ryan, with his seventh goal of the season, gives Liberty the one nothing lead with just about 11 minutes to go in the first period. 
Liberty wins the draw in their own in uh, at center ice after the goal was scored. Now Optin Aker skating back in his own zone. The onus with it. It goes over his stick. And able to keep it in his own hues, but only to give it right back to Westchester behind the goal. Clear, he fires it off the glass, out into center. Liberty picks up the puck there. Pass up from Kruikshank to Marshall King, is able to deflect it into the zone, but it goes right on Colgan, who covers the puck to force a draw. With 10.38 left in the first period. Liberty with a 1-0 lead. They are in the away blue jerseys and the white trim with a little bit of red sprinkled through their uniforms as well. Face off to the right of Colgan. Won by Westchester. And then up ahead, Leo Flick tries to find Jean-Louis. Batted away from him. Jean-Louis instead gets to it and sends it into the zone. Liberty now skating behind their goal in the near side corner. Four or five players fighting for it. And Hughes stops behind the net. He's got full possession now and is looking for a pass to break out of the zone. Finds his man on the near side. Skating up ice with it with speed. Hamilton, he chips it into the zone and they'll give chase. Andy Skipper backhands it, back behind the goal, and then a centering pass was off the ice and goes through everybody from Hughes. Picking up with it on the far side. Thompson, and now skating at the circle. Back to Hughes. The shot blocked in front. A good block here. It was Tyler Wingen on the block, and now Jean-Louis skates into the Liberty zone. He's tied up by Fricks very well behind the goal. Jean-Louis, the only Ram there, and now three Rams are fighting for it. They are able to center. Here's Swally, takes the shot from the slot, blocked in front. Jean-Louis gets it back out to the point. It goes under the stick of Gage Downing, and they'll have to recollect themselves. Colgan fires up the long pass to Bill Swall at center. Liberty's able to take it from him, and then the pass here. Up on the far side, finds its way over there to Liberty. Now behind the behind the goal, we've got a penalty coming up. It's going to be Gage Downing, who will go to the box. Curly was skating in on uh, goal, and then behind the net, and Gage Downing entangled him illegally. So we'll have the first power play of the afternoon. To kill it for Westchester. John Mango to take the draw. Optinaker as well as Tom Cole and Kevin Cleary. Liberty wins the draw and their power play looked menacing last night. Shot save made low by Colgan. Sharts was the one taking the one-timer from the blue line. And Westchester is able to clear the rebound out and all the way down for Scott. Scott stops it in front of his net, passes to Ryan in the far corner, and Liberty's trying to break out of their zone here with Cole making things a little bit difficult for them. Eventually they're able to bypass him, and now Ryan skating up the middle of the ice. Gains the zone, drops it off into the far corner. Centering pass, blocked by Optinaker, and then they're trying to find it. It's kicked behind the goal, and then Schartz. Schartz skates to the point. Long pass to the far side to Ryan. Back to Schartz at the center of the point. He's got Hughes. Hughes calls for it. He gets it. Back now to Schartz, who fires the shot deflected by Garvin up and over the bar and into the netting behind the goal with 8.24 left in the first period. Liberty hanging on to the one goal lead, 1-0, and they have a minute and 11 seconds left on the power play to Gage Downing. Thompson will take the draw for the Flames against Tyler Wingetts for Westchester. And the Flames have control. Here's Nelson at the point. His pass is errant. Bionis picks it up and ships it the length of the ice. Stopped by Scott. And now Liberty breaks out again to set up the power play. From behind their own goal, they overskate the puck at center, but Hamilton's able to regain the puck, and he's offside as it enters it as the puck enters the zone just a little bit after Hamilton did. 44 seconds left on the downing penalty to Westchester. Face off outside the zone. Hamilton wins the draw for Liberty. They've won all the power play draws, the important ones here so far tonight. Ha Nelson takes a big hit, but gets the pass over to the far corner. They're looking still. Liberty 
Now at the point, Nelson along the blue line to Krumikshank. He passes to Thompson out in front, deflected just wide of the net by King. He was defended there by Skipper. King jumps on the rebound behind the goal. He's able to wrap it all the way around. Krumikshank takes the hard shot. It goes over the bar from the point, and then the rebound out to the far half boards where Nelson grabs it. Nelson with it. He skates. He shoots. It's blocked out in front by his own man and sent out of the zone and clearly hurt on the play is King. There goes the downing penalty. Krumikshank now gains the zone. He's able to send it all the way in. Colgan stops it behind the net. Back to Bionis in the far corner of their own zone. Here's Bill Swall. Back to Bionis. And then over on the far side. Horacek gains the zone. He's got Bionis in support. Bionis out in front of the goal. He scores! Bionis ties the game on a great pass from Horacek through the slot. And he's able to beat Scott low to the right side to make it 1-1 with 6.53 to play in the first. Well, it looked like Liberty was gaining all the momentum there, but a great penalty kill by Westchester and uh, a breakaway or a two-on-one on the, the opposite side. So a uh, big momentum boost for Westchester. Despite all the possession and the control that Liberty had on that power play, they didn't trouble Colgan that much. They didn't have to make too many saves. Most of the shots that they had taken were wider than that, and honestly, they took a lot of shots last night, and uh, many of them were fired wide as well. So it just ha so happened that they had um, about 65 shots last night, and eventually about six or seven of them are going to go in. 1-1 the score, 6.35 left to go in the first period. The play is in Liberty's zone in the far corner. It's tied up there among three or four players, and then King eventually emerges with the puck, is able to pass up ahead. Here's Bergen. Bergen with speed. He fires the wrister. Colgan bobbled it at first, and then he tapped it away with his stick out of the zone. Reynolds now has it at center. Good passing by Liberty. Here's Bergen, and then Clark. Clark centers it through the crease, and it goes through everybody. King's able to keep it in the zone and pass it here. Here's Bergen fires the wrister over the bar. Rebound bounces out to the near side half boards, and then into the corner for five players to chase. Hughes now has it at the point. Passes along the blue line. Fires in the wrister. It's saved by Colgan. The rebound's high in the air. And Horacek's the first one to get to it. Now he's got some time. And he fires it off the glass. And out of the zone. Icing's waved off because Walsh is able to get there first. He centers it. And it goes through the, cr the crease. And picked up by Liberty. Ryan now. He passes to the far side. Wrister comes in. Save made by Colgan. And then behind the goal. And into the corner it goes. Liberty with it. Garvin fires in a low, weak wrister, and then it goes wide. Sharts skates with it into the corner, and he drops it off for Crane. Along the blue line to Hughes. Hughes bats it in with his backhand. Garvin in the corner. He skates away from Downing. He fires the wrister. It goes wide. Unable to find the net so far right now is Liberty. Here's Sharts. Sharts skates into the slot. He passes to the far circle. Shot. Save made Colgan. And then pass Garvin the rebound. And emerging with it, Liberty. They skate back out. And the shot is blocked. And then all the way out of the zone. Jamie Crane, the Philadelphian, is able to pick it up. He tries to sidestep one of the Rams. Is able to get his pass up to Garvin at center. And now Ryan with it. Skates on the right side. He takes the wrister and it's over the bar. Thompson gets the rebound, keeps it in the zone, and then eventually flicks it back to Kruikshank, but it's back out to center. And then John louis fighting three flames for it. He's able to get to it, and the pass comes into Liberty zone, but Leo Flick was offside. He has to let it go. 4.20 left to go in the first period. The score is 1-1, thanks to Manny Bionis' game-tying goal. Kruikshank is taken down from behind by Leo Flick, and we'll get a penalty on that. Liberty has control. Going to the bench is the goaltender, and they'll try to set up a six on five right now. The extra attacker's on the ice. Jean-Louis is watching closely. Kruikshank behind the goal. He stops and fires it here to the near side. Liberty's able to break out of the zone. Here's Harris. Harris into the Westchester zone. He stops. As soon as Westchester touches the puck, they'll have a stoppage for a penalty. Kruikshank then. And then over to the far corner, Bill Swall is able to get there first, and he touches up to begin the penalty time. Well, I was about to say it earlier, but I thought it might have been a, a coincidence, but Leo Flick seems to be trying to take people's heads off tonight, but uh, in an in a uncontrollable fashion. 
Um, and that's why he got a penalty right there, a boarding penalty right there. Clear boarding call, and two minutes will go on the board for Leo Flick. Uh, and he, last night, the Flames and the Rams uh, got a bit temp tempestuous uh, with the tempers, and Leo, the Liberty Flames win the draw. They fire in the shot from Schartz. It goes wide to the left. Hughes now, and in the far circle. Ryan passes back to Hughes at the point. He skates, and then he passes Schartz, and he passes to Schartz, and then the shot pass comes in to Hughes. Great puck movement here. Back to Harris in the near corner, and Westchester's able to jump on the loose puck. A little bit too many passes. And Tom Cole smartly just taps it into the zone and forces Scott to jump on the puck and give up a face-off in his own zone on the power play. Well, this penalty aside, uh, it, it's just way too easy for Liberty to gain the zone. Westchester needs to do, do a better job of, of neutralizing them in the neutral zone. Face-off won by Westchester, and they're able to knock it all the way back to Kevin Cleary in his own zone, who skies it about 200 feet, and behind the goal now with a minute and 10 seconds left on the flick penalty, the captain of the Flames, Hughes. Skates up ice. He gives it to Ryan. Ryan's able to sidestep a couple of Rams. They get it in. Deflect it up to Colgan. He makes the save. And now, Garvin, their leading scorer, skates out in front. Dangerous player. Takes the shot. It's blocked out in front. And swept out of the zone by Westchester. Oh, you idiot. Wow. No penalty called here after a late hit behind the play after Westchester had sent it the length of the ice. Schartz with 38 seconds left on the power play in his own zone. He gives to Hughes, who skates and then passes to Garvin at center. Garvin is able to get it to Hamilton, who sends it into the slot. He shoots. Save on the blocker. Rebound directed into the far corner. Thompson stops. He gets it back out to the, to the point here. Nelson. Nelson fires the wrister. Deflected. He scores. And it's Marshall King who deflects. The Nelson shot from the point to make it 2-1 on the power play. And that's what we were talking about before with, with uh, Liberty putting people in front of net and deflecting pucks. But I, I really blame that on Swole there. He's taking liberties on, on players and, and getting into, into fights when he doesn't need to. I mean, you're on, the, you're on the penalty kill. You need to worry about the penalty kill instead of taking people's heads off. We've seen that all year from Swole, that just the physicality. And I know that you like the physicality, but uh, it needs to be smart. And uh, that was behind the play, and it was, he was lucky not to have a, a call made on that. Oh, I, I love the physicality, but yeah. you need to be smart about it, and you can't be doing it when you're on the penalty kill. Westchester with the puck in their own zone. They're down 2-1 to one with a minute and 30 seconds left in the first period. They were able to get it to Liberty's zone, and then Optenacre with it. And the near side half forwards, he's taken down. There's no penalty called. And, uh, wow, they're going at it pretty physically now away from the play. It's Optenacre and one of the Flames. We can't quite tell who. Now it's Krilly. Krilly and Optenacre were going at it on the ice. No penalties called there. And it was completely away from the play and distracted us from the puck. Manny Bionis saucers it up ahead for John Mango. who's able to tap it into the Liberty zone and Westchester just needs to make a change. So Liberty with control now. Kruik Shank gets the red line and then sends it in from the near side. It wraps to Colgan behind the goal. He's trying to get it out of the zone and is able to lift it out past Jean-Louis though. And Hughes, the captain of the Flames, gets it up ice. Here's King. King tries to center it. It's actually a shot on Colgan. And then the net's loose. And Colgan knocks it loose to make sure that the referee knows. I think this is a point in the game where it's early enough where the ref need, refs need to call a penalty at some point on one of these players that are taking their liberties at, at the opposing team. It's, it's going to become a problem that we saw that, uh, I can't remember what game it was, but players going after each other one after another, and we can't have that. I love physicality, like I said, but you can't have people going at other players uh, in, a, in a poor fashion. So we have a, a penalty coming up, a boarding call, and actually the linesman was taken out as well. So one of the Rams will go to the box here after that penalty call. We'll see which one it is. 
They're even taking out referees now. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually one of the flames. Actually, just piggybacking off of a previous point, uh, the reason why Westchester needs to be better in the neutral zone is once Liberty gets into their own or into Westchester's zone, they're way too good for Westchester to stop. Their passing is ridiculous, and uh, in order to stop them, they have to gain the neutral or be better in the neutral zone. Westchester does. So, ten seconds left in the first period. Liberty up two to one. They have it. In their own zone, Westchester trying to keep it in, and then Kyle Cleary comes up with a puck. Kevin Cleary with it in the near side, far side corner, and that will do it for the first period. And so, some lingering tensions after last night's uh, overflowing. Two to one is the score as we head into the first intermission between Liberty and Westchester. The Flames have the lead, and we'll have a penalty to tell you about when we come back to Bergen after the first intermission here on Westchester's Hockey Radio Network.